iClicker runs off a flash drive. So you want to locate your flash drive and find the iClicker Win version 6.1 folder. If you're on a Macintosh, you'd be using the iClicker Mac folder. Click to go into the folder and then look for the application. And double click to open iClicker. And this is exactly what the iClicker welcome screen will look like when you have no new courses. All you need to do is click on the new button and then put your course information in. I'm just going to put in CLS 100 section 001 and then highlight the course and click choose to open it. Here's where you can change the settings to be a little more specific to what you'd like. On the first tab, the general tab, you can edit the course name here. The most important thing here is the instructor's remote ID. The blue remote that you're going to be using, you need to put in the eight character code from the back of the remote into this field. That's how the remote can talk to the base and save the information that you put in. At the very bottom is a welcome message. This is the welcome message that will show up on your students' clickers when they turn them on in your class. So you might put hello or your class name, CLS 100 maybe. Let's go to the CMS registration tab. Here you want to switch the course management system to Blackboard version 8 and above. On the polling tab, this allows you to customize the polling toolbar that will float when you're using iClicker. You can change the size. Right now it's set at medium. And this down here, this box gives you a sense of how large medium is. If you change it to large, you can see the buttons bigger and small and you can see them smaller. You can also customize which buttons will be there. The A-E is for multiple choice. The 1, 2, 3 is for numeric responses. And then if you're going to have alphanumeric responses, the ABC123 button is used for that. If you know that you're only going to do multiple choice in your class, you can select the other buttons and click remove to take them off of your toolbar. At the bottom is the polling timer. When you start the timer, if you want it to always start counting up from zero seconds, then keep it in its default position. Otherwise, if you know you always want to give your students a specific amount of time to answer a question, you can actually set the timer to count down. Select countdown from and then select how many minutes and seconds. On the scoring tab, this lets you put in how you're going to score students on an everyday basis in your course. So for instance, you can go by participation points, meaning that as long as they particip participate, they get a score. Say for instance, you want to give your students five points per class and they have to actually answer 100% of the questions, you would put in 5 and then 100%. If you want to allow for students being tardy or just maybe being unsure, you can select some of the other options. All but one question, at least 75%, at least 50%, or at least one question. The performance points allows you to give extra points based on how they respond. If you want to just give them points based on getting correct answers, you'd want to set partici participation points to zero and then just use the performance points. 
you could give them one point for responding, an extra point for the correct response, and then you can also limit the total number of performance points. So this screen might take a little finessing depending on how you're going to use it in your class. On the results tab, you can select if you want to use bar charts or histograms. The most important setting here is the correct answer display. When you're using iClicker in your class, if you want to keep the correct answer hidden until you actually display it, that's what's set up by default. Otherwise, you can have it automatically show the correct answer when the polling is stopped. And the base display tab. On your base display, you can actually see the results as they're coming in. This controls whether you see percentages or number of votes for each choice. So for multiple choice displays, if you're asking multiple choice questions, you can either see the percentage of votes for each choice, you could see just the number of votes, or if you want to see both, you can also have them alternate. If you're going to be using numeric responses, you can dis select how many it will display. Right now it will display the top three responses and every five seconds it will update it. It will also so show the percentage of votes for each response. If you'd rather see the number of votes, you can also select that instead. And additionally, you can change the settings for an alphanumeric response display. Demographics is for a little bit more advanced, so we're not going to change anything on this tab right now. And we're going to hit set for course. And now the settings are complete for that course. You might get a message that mentions integrating iClicker with Blackboard. That's just fine. We're going to cover this in another video on how to use iClicker Integrate Building Block.